the main stigmas is that taxidermy is macabre or kitsch or something odd and has no value within our community. And on the contrary, I think that the work that we do is so important. It's a love of science, art, natural history, animals, all coming together. Taxidermy is the arrangement of skin. Taxidermy really came about because people were exploring and trying to go to other countries and then bring back specimens that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily see and you'd present them to, you know, lords and ladies and what have you. But then, of course, the scientific study came into it. So um, a lot of the stuff in museums and what have you, it's about preserving it in a manner that you can collect data from later and study. I think my interest started because you couldn't get into it in this country. Then I stopped a mentor and ended up working for three years every weekend for free. I took my long service leave at 30 from the insurance and finance world and went over to Spain for three months and ended up building a museum on the history of hunting in a little village called Los Yebenes. After that, I came back, started Rest in Pieces. When I first started, I started to get some fairly heavy death threats, not just general disgust, but quite specific and targeted death threats, which was a bit shocking to me in the beginning. It's easy to assume that it must be vegans or vegetarians and, you know, we're, we're doing something wrong by the animal. But when I started to look into who was saying these things, it was often people living in metropolitan cities that eat meat. That started to really fascinate me and has shaped a lot of my own personal artwork and kind of helped to give us a voice and a direction with what we want to do from an education standpoint. Because it occurred to me that people don't understand where their food comes from. We don't kill animals in order to preserve them. We preserve them because they're going to go to waste and there's beauty and there's scientific value and there's data that you can collect through the preservation of species and you can have conversations about things that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to have conversations about but there's definitely this idea of either it's macabre and we're hurting animals or just simple cognitive dissonance of i don't understand it which seems ridiculous but it's really common so when you think about animal preservation, people often think about skinning. You get lots of visual references when you think about skinning and it's the thing that people are most apprehensive about. But taking the skin off an animal is the easy part. Once you learn how to skin, you can kind of replicate that on any species. Putting it back together is the really, really tricky part. So once we actually get the skins of the animals. We need to create sculptures. We need to study reference. We'll always have our computers open with heaps and heaps of photos. We try and go out into nature as much as possible. So we'll spend all weekend out in nature, photographing birds, learning about them. Because if you don't watch and study the anatomy, you can never get a piece right. So lots and lots of anatomical study involved. So we got commissioned to do a gray fronted pigeon and after we skinned the dove, we had to freeze the body and we made a cast of the body. And so this is the body of the dove. You can kind of see like the breast shape here um, and where the legs would have joined. And then this is our pore hole. So once we've made our mold, we'll then blow foam into this mold and uh, get a 3D model of the um, shape of the body which we'll then sand down and we match to our measurements of our sheet here so once I'd skinned the carcass I take all the measurements so I know exactly where everything needs to go and then I can take a look at this polyurethane body which will become uh, the mold for the inside 
We have to fill the brain cavity of the skull with clay and then rebuild the eyes and insert eyes before we put the skin back on the dove. We're going to start to paint up around the inner eyes and also the nose and the lip line. So through the, the preservation process of the skin and with no blood supply, you get that really pale discoloration. So what I do is I now start to mix some colors um, that are going to match the nose, the eyes and inside the lips. And so this is gonna really bring that life back into the fox. So going in, because when we mount, we have lots of um, clay inside the face. So the clay obviously dries a light. So what we're doing here is we're just allowing the paint to replace anything that was artificially put into the nose. I was a hairdresser for 30 odd years and I wanted to do something a little bit different and on my Instagram feed one day popped up a sign from Resting Pieces and I was like, that's what I want to do. So I came down, did my first class, totally fell in love with it. My first piece was um, a rat, her name was Clarissa. Most people that when they do their first piece, look at it in hindsight and think, wow. <laughs> um, but I still look at her and think she's gorgeous. Like anything, if you don't understand it, you tend to have a misconception about it or you tend to think that it's something that it's not. So I think the more people you can talk to and explain how it works, and also just simple things like people think that you just cut it open and then stuff it with something. You know, to be able to explain to them how the whole process works, I think they get more of an appreciation of it. I think that the work that we do is so important um, not only are we educating people about preservation types that are dying and not because we're working on deceased animals, but their traits and scientific knowledge. If it's not shared by us, it's not getting shared and it will literally die out. And then on top of that, there is so much value in having preserved specimens for the purpose of educating future generations about the importance of native wildlife. How do you have those discussions if not through being able to touch and see and understand an animal? There's only so much you can get from books or from the computer. And it's not like you can go out in Australia and really see these specimens. Our animals are nocturnal and a lot of them are endangered. When are children or families or even society meant to see this stuff, if not in a museum. Some of the most amazing artists I know in the world are taxidermists. They have the ability to sculpt and carve and paint and create in a way that I haven't seen other artists do because they have to be good at so many different things. When you look at, you know, taxidermy or wet specimens or what have you, there's this opportunity to display things and show anatomy and learn about an animal and see it from the inside out. There's things that you can do through preservation that you just can't replicate in other art forms. It's kind of taking that stigma away that taxidermy is about hunting or it's macabre and we try to make it feel and look beautiful because that's the way that we see it.